Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Thinkwood Zycoma, where we're going to be taking you guys basically inside my mind, doing a live commentary of a Soul Arena match where we can focus on the fighting basics and fundamentals. So you guys don't have such a miserable time in Soul Arena because for the most part, a lot of people don't enjoy Soul Arena. That's just the reality of it. And the main reason they don't is because they are not winning. Like, honestly, guys, if you're dropping 10 kills a game in Soul Arena, no problem. I don't think you would be as mad as you are. Honestly. Obviously, there's the nature of the fact that solos in general is not as welcoming. It's not as fun as duos in general. Just because in solos, your mistakes are punished like 10 times harder, right? And it's really important that you focus on the basics of the game to go back to a state where you're not making as many easy mistakes. I can show you some good examples in this game. Talking specifically about fighting, we're going to show you how simple winning fights can be. It doesn't take that much effort as long as you do everything right. It seems like this fight is over. I'm going to make sure I get a good beam here. Yep, unfortunate. But we don't get the beam, which is actually pretty bad. Guy's trying to get threatened to pieces. Yep. The main issue with that guy is I just did not take a shot at all. <laughs> 100. Straight up, come on up again. And pull out my shotgun. 75. I do need to heal, unfortunately. So I think this guy's gonna get some heals off too. That's unfortunate. I'm like pretty low as well, so I don't want to chuck too hard and try to get in. Yeah, we're gonna go around. Just make sure you don't go through the tunnel. It's gonna cause some problems. Looking for some angles. As long as I don't miss the shot, you'll notice I don't panic even though I got hit really hard. And then I don't just rush the shot because the only way I lose that, unironically, is if I miss my shot. If I miss my shot, it's just over. Luckily for us, season is super, super good. I've been enjoying it a lot. I've been playing a lot more. The past like four or five seasons, I haven't actually played that much. I've just been playing for coaching purposes and I've just been busy with coaching in general. But I just haven't played that much at all, like honestly. And the best part about that and the relevancy for this episode is my mechanics are not top tier. They're not that good. It's decent, of course, but they're like, I could be way better than I am right now because I'm not in my prime per se. Like that's the way I want to put it. And the best part about it is like, the reason why I can still win fights and perform to a similar degree, because I don't rely on my mechanics. Mechanics are meant to be a supplement, right? And they can be important if you're really bad at executing, of course, it does depend on each person. But what's most important is like, you follow the simple ideas that are outlined for you. Do you follow the basics of fighting? Honestly, I shouldn't have kept the DMR. It's not a great loadout that I have here, but we'll make it work. As long as I don't end up in like too many 50-50s, it should be okay. I would love an SMG or a pistol, but we're not going to be too lucky here. I'm going to chase this guy right here. I'm going to focus the guy on top. I don't think they know where I am. Okay. We're going to work top down. Meaning we're going to focus this guy first. Okay, this guy's alone now. Hit him hard. From the top. Katana up. Katana up again, so I have time to pull out my gun. I have Katana for fall damage. One more shot. Yeah, I'm pretty low. So is he. Heard the pickaxe and then you just go for the edit. I'm gonna find a swap weapon. And then I'm gonna go for the plays on other people. But you'll notice like some of the basics that I'm following is if there's a third party, I'm blocking them off as I'm fighting the guy because the whole reason I'm trying to fight this guy in front of me, usually in most cases, because they're low, right? 
I found a nice peak. I got the HP advantage. Now I'm pushing them. I'm aggressing, making sure my advantage actually means something. And then after that, after I kill the first guy, it's really easy to just... Honestly, if the other guy was pretty good, I think I should have died. So what I should have done in hindsight is to just make several more boxes after I got the first kill. If I make several more hard map boxes after I get the first kill, that gives me more space to operate in. And that gives me a lot more room to breathe, right? Because the whole reason why the second fight was so sketch and why I got low in the first place... I had a feeling that was happening. Yeah, I'm, we're just going to grab that. This. Off the med kit. But yeah, the reason why the second fight was so sketchy... Because I didn't make the space, and then he jumped in into the same box, which was obviously the enemy's box. And then it just became really sketchy from there. The main thing I was trying to focus on at that point... He's above me. That was really risky. We're just gonna heal. Why not? But yeah, make space after you get a kill. That's the generic lesson that I want to give. Because if you make space after you get a kill, it becomes really easy to just stabilize and not get into a really chaotic situation. for whites. Fortunately, you find like bandages now or just kill him. I think I just have to kill him. There we go. <laughs> There's actually no way I'll actually live this game. The only way I live there after I'm less than 10 HP because I don't have time to pop the med kit is to just go for the kill or find bandages. Either or will help me live. But we end up getting the kill, and then there we go. Okay, we need a katana out of here. I would love to pick up a medkit before we go. But, but yeah, guys, the second this recent fight was pretty like unfortunate. With I made some couple peak mistakes that led me to low HP situation, and that is just hard to come back from there. If you're making a dry peak, you have to really understand what gun swap play is. Again, go back to some of my old videos. They will absolutely help you in terms of understanding what that is and why it's so important to peak everything that you do. If you make a dry peak, you better have a really good reason to do it. For example, if you look at a few fights ago, I made a dry peak here. But the main reason I did that and why I did it so quickly, because I could tell that this guy was trying to edit out. And when he's trying to edit out, that's when I can do a double edit, make a dry peek, and just go for the shot because I care about the speed at that point. Make sure you are abusing the right-hand nature of this game. When you're good, you're going to have a really good time. Okay, we're going to kick this, grab the mats. Pop the slurp. Reload everything. I have good heals now, so we can aggress him. Got by him. Shouldn't have done that. When you're low ground like that. reason I just like it felt really bad that he was just making so many boxes and I had an HP advantage from the 80 damage crack that I did and considering I only had to do 80 damage to crack him if I had to guess he's much lower than 100 he's probably like 60 70 HP as long as I felt comfortable and confident that I was gonna hit that counter shot on his peak it was gonna be pretty easy so yeah I felt comfortable running in I would not recommend for the most part running into their box there's a, there's a fight happening up there there's a fight also happening this way I'll probably take this fight first just because it's not on top of the floating island. It's easier to access. But at the same time, like while I'm approaching them, I'm going to look out to my side to make sure there's no other third parties. And then head on over. Yeah. 
I'm gonna wait one more charge. Then I'm gonna katana up. He pumps me there, that was really bad. Wow, he just hit me sword. Not gonna lie, this guy was pretty decent and he had a significant HP advantage on me. But the fundamental that you can learn from that fight is actually pretty simple. When you see them aggressing on you, right? So I expanded out. I was not comfortable taking a peek right away. I expanded out, right? I kept expanding out like this, kept expanding out. And then what happened was he approached from here. The problem with approaching from here, the way he was doing it, is that I have a right hand peek on this edge right here, right? So if you look at it from bird's eye view, right? If you look at it from above, then you can notice that he went around counterclockwise or sorry clockwise he went around to his left which gives him left hand peak gives me right hand peak what he should have done with my cluster of builds is here he should go around counterclockwise like this and what that allows him to do is it gives him a little bit more safety in terms of the right hand peak he finds natural right hand peaks around every corner that he goes around because he's moving around in a counterclockwise fashion and that will just help him in the fight that's the first thing and the second thing is whenever you go for the counter shot which basically means you're playing defensive and you are trying to find a good timing to go for some damage back the reason why damage back is so important especially in this age of fortnite because people know how to box right now and if you are losing on hp chances are they will not let you heal unless you spend literally 1k mats so in order to not waste all your mats and in order to get some footing in the fight you have to go for some counter damage and that's what's going to either put it back into an even situation where they're 100 hp and you're 100 hp and they're going to continue to fight you but at least you, you know you're even hp now or it's going to put into a situation where they heal which in turn gives you time to heal which is really good so that's a really good example of trying to get some counter damage instead of just constantly trying to heal expanding and healing is a good first attempt you're testing them to see what they do but if they do pressure properly and they pressure aggressively then counter shots is your way out honestly because they're never going to let you heal Okay, he just went around again go counterclockwise put a cone on top so he can't edit that take this push him out yeah, at least i traded back if he just got that shot off on from on me for free then it would be pretty hard to continue the fight because then he would be full hp and then i would be sitting at 68 but at least i traded back the mistake i made was overstepping my bounds. i went a little bit too deep yeah, I placed that cone on top. The mistake I made there, though, was not covering everything. Cone is his. I gotta be careful. I go for a pre-fire, pop another mini. Ooh, that reset was so close. Should have spammed the scroll wheel a little bit more, and then I would have got that reset. The thing about doing those blueprint, those like clean cut blueprint edits where it's hard to reset. You have to spam the scroll wheel a little bit more. Like, it just helps, right? On controller, you just have to spam reset button a little bit more. And then it's just going to be able to be a lot easier. So, that would have been clean if I actually reset, right? Because the only reason I ended up dying was because my scroll wheel kind of, not bugged out per se, but it didn't operate the way I wanted it to. And if I got the reset off, it would have been just super clean. But guys, like, there are some really good examples in this video. And hopefully next time in the next episode, I'm going to do a lot better and just get a good win for you. The main concepts that are outlined in the video, HP advantage, making sure you're getting some counter damage, making sure you're accounting for third parties, all of the above. It can really help you because I can understand why people are frustrated. They come back from work or school. They don't have that many hours to play Fortnite. So you want your practice to be effective. You want to not waste your time. You take a step back and you look at everything. Make sure you focus on the basic, super fundamentals of the game, the ideas that surround fighting. Then you're gonna have a lot better time in Soul Arena. Don't try to go as fast as possible. Don't try to clip people. I have no doubt that you're gonna improve. And you're gonna have a lot better time practicing in Soul Arena because Soul Arena is great. It's a great resource. The only issue is people just keep dying. And it, it's not easy to like Soul Arena when you're not having a good time. So check out the new videos that are coming out soon, guys. They're going to be really good and super, super informative. I'm going to be making like tips about the katana, making sure that you have tips about box fighting, all of the above, guys. So it's going to be super, super good. I'm going to be uploading super frequently, or at least trying to. And hopefully you guys can stick around and enjoy the video and the content that I put out. Thank you, guys. Peace out.